Okay, so today we are going to be reviewing the Sigma 35mm f1.4 and uh, I decided to get this lens because I've seen a couple other YouTubers talking about the 35 the Canon 35mm f1.4 and uh, how they really like using that in portrait photography and for weddings and stuff like that. So I didn't have the money to get the Canon f1.4 so I chose this option now I did watch uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Dustin Abbott he is a Canadian youtuber who's extremely smart great at what he does he reviews a lot of lenses and cameras and stuff and his review was from about three or four years ago and uh, at the time he would not recommend this to anybody shooting professionally um, he said because of the inconsistencies in the autofocus and stuff like that. However, I had excellent luck calibrating the Sigma 18 to 35 f 1.8 on the T7i. I had a lot of. Uh, it took me a long time. Hours now, probably 30 hours. I say I spent on it overall because there's a lot of calibration involved. But I had a lot of luck with it once I finally had it calibrated. So I took. A risk on this lens and um, this out of the box was horrible the calibration was definitely needed um, and, and that really is discouraging when you put the lens on for the first time and your first set of images are just all blurry and horrible it is very discouraging however I was confident that I could fix it and I did I calibrated it uh, my settings uh, from left to right uh, 18, 18, 13, and 11. The infinity was 11. The closest, I think, is a 0.99 was 18. So 18, 18, 13, and 11. This lens was a lot easier to calibrate than the 18 to 35 because there's only one focal length at 35. Okay. So, um, yes, definitely needs the calibration. And that's a big downfall for everybody. So you do need the Sigma Dock for the calibration. So, it's calibrated. Um, I took it out. I'm filming with it right now, just so you know. And I, I took it out, and let me go through some of the images here that I that I've got. Um, let's start with this one here, and you'll notice that f 1.4. There is quite a bit of vignetting. However, in the post processing, it, there's a lot of apps that have. Uh, lens correction software built into it and I use Lightroom. I just tapped on the lens correction software and it was an easy fix. It automatically took away the vignetting as you see here. So that wasn't an issue. Now what is an issue with f1.4 um, here let me show you this. This is indoors f1.4 and uh, this is my reluctant wife who hates having her photo taken as much as I like to take photos. But f1.4 this is fairly sharp with no flash in a fairly dark room and as you can see I think this came out great especially for as dark as the room was at the time and these are the settings that I have I'm gonna keep the settings differently than what I've done in the past I'm gonna start putting the settings up so you can see what the lenses do at the particular settings now f1.4 outdoors this is at the flower park that I like to visit um, here f1.4 is too shallow or it's too small of a focal area for what for like flowers and in wildlife or you know anything like that now i don't know i just don't see any situations outdoors uh where i typically shoot you know as a as a hobbyist not a professional um where f1.4 is going to be extremely useful but watch this when i stop down and get into like the 3.2 to 5 now you see a huge huge bump in sharpness and and this lens falls right in line with the 18 to 35 when i say that it is extremely sharp especially between the f like 3.2 up to 5 and up of course every lens gets sharper as you go higher but at f5 this thing was tack sharp and after i had it calibrated to the 60 mark ii which i'm on right now i found that it did not miss 
hardly ever on the Focus. Now, and that's a lot different than a lot of the other reviews I saw, which makes sense because those reviews are three to four years old on old equipment. The equipment has gotten better. Uh, it's worth reviewing this lens now on new equipment because if it if if the if the technology didn't grow with the cameras, then what would be the point of buying the new cameras? So obviously the lenses will react differently to the new cameras and the new autofocus systems and the new sensors and the new processors and all that goes into a new camera. So it's worth reviewing old lenses or trying older model lenses on the newer equipment and with the expectation that you're going to get better results, in my opinion, because it's better equipment. Like I said, otherwise, what would be the point of buying the new equipment if the lenses if, if it just didn't look better or have, you know, better, take better pictures in video, which takes me to my next point, video. Okay, now you've seen some photos and this is some video here. Um, video is another main reason why I got this. Um, right now, I'm sitting extremely close. So here, I'm touching it right now. I can reach up and literally touch it and I can make the adjustments on camera for vlogging or for making these types of videos which is fantastic um, now this is the 6d mark ii full frame uh 35 millimeter so i think on a crop sensor this would be the equivalent of around a 21.5 millimeter uh to put it in perspective so this is basically like using your kit lens at 18 millimeter on the on a crop sensor which you can if it was at 18 you could reach up and touch so that's also really nice the the that it, you could do this close and also for portrait photography, so here, let me show you in a couple more portraits here. Um, with this type of photography, you are right up on your subject, and you could have a conversation with them. And that's something that I saw with a lot of the other YouTubers, what they were talking about. And it really does help make a difference. You don't have to yell, like with the 70 to, 20, the 70 to 200 f2.8 that I have. Um, I got that mainly for portraits and I noticed I have to stand so far back that trying to get um, any kind of interaction with your subject is a little more difficult and, you, and it's you have to yell it's just harder to communicate this lens you're right up on them and it just it's just a different experience than with the longer lens that's all so and one of the main reasons that I went with this is because I am shooting a wedding coming up soon. It's my first real professional gig. Uh, a friend of mine saw a lot of my photos and stuff and he wanted to save a lot of money so he asked me knowing that um, I'm big into photography and stuff like that and I said sure why not. I gave him probably the deal of a lifetime but I'm gonna gain a lot of experience and although it wasn't part of my original plan uh, the opportunity came up, a friend asked me, and I said, sure, why not? So I'm going to do that, and I've, I've got this lens for that. And that, that was one of the main reasons I got this lens and why I was researching uh, different lenses for portraits and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, and then the other big reason, the video aspect, uh, I'm sorry, I got off track here, was uh, it, for indoor video work, uh, especially not even video work just indoor video with my family and my kids and stuff even with the f2.8s on the full frame um, i didn't have anything wide that was quite f1.4 i had the 18 to 35 sigma the other one um, f1.8 but that was for a crop sensor and on the crop sensor the 18 was still i felt uh not wide enough and obviously I have the 50 millimeter f1.8, but that's obviously not wide enough. So I thought the 35 f1.4 is going to be great on um, my Christmas morning video that I make every year for my family, for us, um, for birthday parties and stuff like that indoors. And a, a nice wide focal length is at 35 on the here, like I said, is equivalent of 21.5 on a crop sensor. So yeah, I just figured... It, this would be a good all-around lens for a lot of different situations and the price point being about a thousand dollars less than the Canon Now it's not water sealed or anything like that or weatherproof like the Canon is But it's about a thousand dollars less. So my expectations were 
that it was going to require a lot of work out of the box, which it did, um, as far as micro adjusting. And once it was adjusted, I expected the from an art series lens to be tack sharp, and it is. So uh, the 35 f 1.4 on the newer cameras, the newer models, is I think an excellent purchase, and it, it's currently on sale. I got this one for $6.99. And I think the price is going to stay down there. I'll link it in the description below. But um, I'm really happy with this lens. And I would I'd say I'd recommend it if you're comfortable making the micro adjustments. If you're not comfortable making those micro adjustments, stay away from it. Because it needs to be done. You need to make those adjustments to make it worth your while to have this lens. Um, I wish Sigma would fix that and have it calibrated already. I don't know why they don't. I'm sure they have the technology to do it, and I'm sure that there's these cameras have been ar around long enough, and there's they can pinpoint you know the newer cameras and and work with Canon, work with Sony, work with Nikon, and come up with a solution to have these way more calibrated or at least calibrated at all. Uh, but they don't so. The other downside to this and all their art series that I've seen so far is that they don't have any image stabilization. And the other thing is it's fairly heavy. Uh, it's cicada, cicada season, cicada season. All right, well, that's it. I just wanted to talk about this lens and give you an idea um, of what I think, what I think about it. So, uh, my final verdict is uh, excellent quality, as I expect from the Sigma Art Series. A lot of work to get it to work correctly, which I also expect from the Art Series. And the price is good enough to, you know, compared to the Canon 35 f1.4 to save up for and get. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, and uh, we'll see you soon.